it so happens with students many a times that whenever they're reading about beta blockers they pay attention to the mechanism yes they pay attention to the users yes uh, some of them do pay attention to the adverse effects and contraindications as well but when it comes to drug interactions very few students actually pay attention I don't know why, but they miss out on the importance of drug interaction or beta blockers. Yes, drug interactions are not important for all the drugs, but for this particular drug group, it is so commonly used. You know, everything is important about this particular drug group. So whether it's the uses, whether it's the adverse effects, whether it's the contraindications, or whether it is their uh, drug interactions. So hi, I'm Dr. Dipika Tikku from Simply Pharmacology, and today this video is going to be just about the drug interactions of propranolol, which is a non-selective beta blocker very important and very high yielding it's going to be a short video and in case you do not feel uh, that you want to read about this from your books so no problem just go through this video it's not a very long video take notes and that you should that that will make you completely set to go and appear and write these interactions in your examinations now before i actually start with the drug interaction i just want to tell you why i'm talking about it being important what is the history behind this you may not know the history that uh, and you may not need to remember history. So for undergraduates, I don't expect that. So it was actually, you know, beta blocker. It's been more than 50 years when this drug was actually discovered by the scientist Sir James Black. And this was such a breakthrough because uh, and he had discovered this drug for angina pectoris. And till that time, only nitrates were available uh, and also available, they, but they were not very effective. So, when beta blockers discovered hue, it was such a eureka moment. And uh, not only for angina, tapse, it has been found to be useful in so many other diseases. You know, so almost all the cardiovascular diseases, congestive heart failure, hypertension, other diseases like uh, thyrotoxicosis, other diseases like uh, in case of, you know, uh, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Then it is very, you know, prophylactically migraine is so important. So, so many uses of this particular drug group is there. And propranolol especially. It's a non-selective beta blocker as I already told you. And he went on and he got the Nobel Prize for this. So that's how important the discovery of this drug was. Right? So let's get on to the only the very important drug interactions I'm going to tell you about. Here is the first one is propranolol with insulin. Now you know what is insulin? So insulin is a hormone secreted by the beta cell of pancreas. Right? So from the beta cell. Now... What happens in case of people who develop type 1 diabetes mellitus? When type 1 diabetes mellitus, hota hai, their beta cells are actually destroyed. So therefore, there is no way they can produce insulin. So the only treatment effective in such patient is that you have to give insulin from outside. Now, in comparison to type 2 diabetes mellitus the first therapy always we actually go and give oral anti-diabetic drugs oral anti-diabetic drugs or jab oral anti-diabetics uh, drugs they may not be that effective like uh, you know long-standing diabetes hai. now oral anti-diabetics akele kaam nahi kar pa rahe. they're not sufficient to lower the blood glucose down so then you need to add the insulin in such patient or if a type 2 diabetic mellitic, uh, mellitus patients, uh, they let's say it's a female and female uh, becomes pregnant. So in pregnancy, we prefer insulin or let's say there's a complication there. We prefer insulin. There's a trauma, surgery. In all those cases, we prefer insulin in those cases. Now, now insulin, hum bahar se dete hai, but the major problem with insulin is what is the major side effect with insulin always that we are worried about is hypoglycemia. That is excessive lowering of the blood sugar okay and remember one thing hyperglycemia causes damage to the organs over a period of time but hypoglycemia is more dangerous because it can cause immediate damage especially to the brain right so the patient can land into like there's hypertension patient can land into coma right and they can be damages in the brain so it is very 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 important to know that whenever somebody you know it is very important to treat hypoglycemia immediately otherwise they can be brain damage so isli hypoglycemia ka dhyan rakhna is always important so whenever a patient is on insulin the doctor tells the patient 
that you should always keep with you something sweet so in case there is decrease in the blood sugar levels you can take that sweet thing and you can save yourself from the hypoglycemia right now the thing is uh ab hame patient ko pata lag gaya ki usko hypoglycemia right that is understood uh ab hamare paas jo ye hai uh hypoglycemia ka usko pata kaise lagega because he the patient he or she will have certain symptoms in the body warning signs kehte hain aur unko batate hain ki hame patient ko hypoglycemia hone wala hai so that's usually because of uh, sympathetic stimulation so patient has tremors patient has palpitations a uh, patient you know the tachycardia and also that tells the patient it's a warning signs ki usko hypoglycemia ho gaya also there is sweating so with this is a good sign in case because now the patient knows he has hypoglycemia and he will take something which is sweet and save himself or herself from any brain damage now this is because of sympathetic stimulation now what if the patient is given propranolol लेट से डायबिटिक पेशेंट है हाइपर टेंशन हो गया डायबिटिक पेशेंट को माइग्रेन हो गया प्रोफाइलैक्स कुछ फॉर एनी रीजन यू आर बीन गिवन प्रोप्रेनोलॉल नाउ प्रेप्रेनोलॉल वी नो इट इज अ नॉन सिलेक्टिव बीटा ब्लॉकर सो इट्स गोइंग टू ब्लॉक द बीटा रिसेप्टर सो ऑल दीज साइन जो हाइपर टेंशन टैकी कार्डिया सॉरी जो पैल्पिटेशन टैकी कार्डिया वगैरह हो रहे थे दे विल नॉट बी मैनिफेस्टेड बिकॉज प्रोप्रेनोलॉल हैज ब्लॉक दो सिंपथेटिक signs and symptoms because it has blocked the sympathetic receptors now patient will go into hypoglycemia yes but the problem now is patient will not know that the patient has gone into hypoglycemia so wo wo uh, sugar ki tablets ya sorry sugar ke cubes ya koi toffee whatever he will not be able to convert so patient will land into dangerous hypoglycemia landing in coma and in emergency and god forbid patient can have permanent brain damage so because propranolol masks these effects of the sympathetic stimulation therefore it is not usually advisable that patients who are on insulin to be given propranolol now there is one sign which is still uh, which will not be masked by propranolol and that is your sweating because this is mainly controlled by the cholinergic system so sweating is one sign which will still be there but the rest of the symptoms they may not be actually evident to the patient so ye wala jo combination hai interaction hai important hai any patient on insulin we prefer not to give some uh, like beta blockers in those patients because it masks the signs of hypoglycemia now the second important interaction is with drugs like digoxin or verapamil now why i have clubbed together these two drugs digoxin you know it's a cladia glycoside and it is used in congestive heart failure because it has a positive inotropic effect that means it increases the force of contraction verapamil is a calcium channel blocker right and verapamil is a calcium channel blocker it has more affinity for the calcium channels of the heart so you know calcium jab bhi present hota hai ya ya to vaso muscles contract karwata hai aur agar in the sa node or the av node is important for its activity so increases the heart rate increases the force of contractions in the heart so when you give a calcium channel blocker then it will lead to decrease in the heart rate it will lead to decrease in the force of contraction so for more details on the uh, calcium channel blockers please refer to my video on the calcium channel blockers so decreases the heart rate decreases the force of contraction and it will also ye ho gaya theek hai this is on the cardiac muscle this is on the sa node and av node pe kya effect hai decrease in the conduction और जो डिजॉक्सिन है दो इट इज अ पॉजिटिव आइनोट्रोपिक एजेंट बट इट हैज अ नेगेटिव इफेक्ट और इट इज अ नेगेटिव ड्रोमोट्रोपिक यू नो इट डिजॉक्सिन कॉजेज लॉट ऑफ रिदमियाज इट कैन कॉज ब्रैडी रिदमियाज इट इट कैन कॉज टैकी रिदमियाज बहुत सारी कॉम्प्लिकेशन होती है वन ऑफ द प्रॉब्लम विद डॉक्सिन इज इट डिक्रीजेज द ए वी कंडक्शन सो इफ यू गिव सच ड्रग्स विच ऑलरेडी आर डिक्रीजिंग द ए वी कंडक्शन विद ड्रग्स लाइक प्रोप्रेनोलॉल बिकॉज प्रोप्रेनोल ने क्या करना है हार्ट में बीटा वन को ब्लॉक करना है सो बीटा वन अदरवाइज हार्ट में क्या करता था इंक्रीज हार्ट रेट इंक्रीज फोर्स ऑफ कंट्रैक्शन एंड इंक्रीज इन द ए वी कंडक्शन ये बीटा वन के इफेक्ट थे बट वेन यू गिविंग अ बीटा ब्लॉक सो ऑल दीज इफेक्ट आर गोइंग टू बी ब्लॉक सो देर देर इज गोइंग टू बी हियर डिक्रीज इन द ए वी कंडक्शन सो ए वी कंडक्शन सो एट्रिया Let's say here, this is your like a smaller heart here. So 
सो दिस इज द एस ए नोड दिस इज द ए वी नोड सो इम्पल्स आते हैं एस ए टू ए वी एंड देन दे मूव इन टू द वेंट्रिकल्स बाय हिज फाइबर्स एंड पकेन जी सो बिकॉज यू हैव ब्लॉक्ड यू हैव गिवन डिडॉक्सिन विरापोमिल इन्होंने ये चीज एरिया में कंडक्शन स्लो कर देनी है एंड वेन यू गिव प्रोप्रेनोलॉल इट इज ऑल्सो गोइंग टू स्लो द कंडक्शन हियर सो डबल इफेक्ट हो गया दोनों का सो देर इज डिक्रीज इन द कंडक्शन सो इम्पल्स फ्रॉम एट्रिया टू वेंट्रिकल जो है दे विल नॉट बी एबल टू मूव सो देर विल बी अ कंडक्शन ब्लॉक सो ए वी ब्लॉक होने के चांसेस रहते हैं वेन यू गिव सच ड्रग्स सो वी आर नॉट रिकमेंडिंग कि कोई भी ऐसी दो ड्रग्स कंबाइन करे जो ए वी कंडक्शन को ब्लॉक करती हैं स्लो करती हैं द सेकेंड वन इज निफिडपीन विच इज ऑल्सो अ कैल्शियम चैनल ब्लॉकर डाईहाइड्रोपेरिडीन से बिलोंग करता है ना This is also calcium channel blocker, but the difference from verapamil is that जो dihydropyridines होते हैं like nifedipine, amlodipine, etc., they have more affinity for your blood vessels, the calcium channel of the blood vessels. So you know that calcium जहाँ भी होएगा, it is important for contraction, you know, of the muscles or the endothelium. And endothelial जो uh, vascular endothelium है, ठीक है? So it will cause contraction of the blood vessels and it leads to vasoconstriction. so if you give a calcium channel blocker it is going to block this vasoconstriction so it leads to vasodilatation ab kya hota hai jab vasodilatation hoti hai jo vasodilatation hoti hai you know that there is pooling of blood niche pool ho jata hai peripherally so there is less of blood will go into the heart so venous return kam ho jati hai and your heart may you know your, there are baroreceptors they will sense it ki there is some problem there is decrease in the Uh, flow to the heart, so they will eventually stimulate the sympathetic system. That is the role of beta receptors. अगर उनको लगता है there is a less less blood flow, वो उनका उन वो किसको मदद मांगने जाते हैं sympathetic system को कि please there is some problem, increase the blood flow. तो फिर sympathetic system comes to the rescue, and when sympathetic system is activated, so you know what happens that it acts on the alpha and the beta receptors. एंड एल्फा रिसेप्टर्स पे होके इट कॉज अ वेजो कंस्ट्रिक्शन बीटा रिसेप्टर्स ऑन द हार्ट इट विल स्टिमुलेट लीडिंग टू इंक्रीज इन द हार्ट रेट इंक्रीज इन द फोर्स ऑफ कंट्रेक्शन सो यू नो हमें बीटा वन रिसेप्टर्स यू ऑलरेडी नो क्या होता है इंक्रीज इन दी हार्ट रेट इंक्रीज इन द फोर्स ऑफ कंट्रेक्शन तो इसको हम कहते हैं इंक्रीज इन द हार्ट रेट बिकॉज ऑफ डिक्रीज इन द बिकॉज ऑफ वेजो डायलिटेशन दिस इफेक्ट इज कॉल्ड एज योर रिफ्लेक्स टैक्की कार्डिया दिस इज अ Reflex because आपकी body आप उसको compensate करने की कोशिश करती है so it is a reflex because of the vasodilatation. Now reflex tachycardia normal population may not be an issue, but problem आती है in patients who already have a underlying cardiac disease, for example angina, myocardial infarction, they have already a weak heart and the heart को वैसी oxygen supply कम मिल रहा है heart को oxygen uh, नहीं मिल रहा तो हम उसको कह रहे हैं हार्ट रेट बढ़ाओ वी आर आस्किंग द वी इंक्रीजिंग द हार्ट रेट वेर इंक्रीजिंग द फोर्स ऑफ कंट्रैक्शन वी आर मेकिंग इट वर्क इवन हार्डर एंड इट हैज द पुअर हार्ट हैज लेस ऑक्सीजन इसका खाना ही नहीं उसके पास सो लेस ऑफ ऑक्सीजन है हाउ विल इट वर्क सो द इट लैन इन टू अ मोर ग्रेवर प्रॉब्लम सो इट इज वेरी डेंजरस फॉर दोज पेशेंट्स हू ऑलरेडी हैव अ वीक हार्ट सो निफिडपेन कॉजेस reflex tachycardia so we need to be very careful in patients of already who, who have an angina and other diseases like that so if you combine it with propranolol what will propranolol do it is a beta 1 blocker it will block block the beta 1 receptor to so na usme reflex tachycardia na force of contraction so it will counteract that effect of nifedipine so it is a good combination to be used with nifedipine because jo adverse effect of nifedipine tha that is your reflex tachycardia gets taken care by propranolol so propranolol ek ccb which is verapamil ke sath nahi dena chahiye but the other ccb nifedipine it can be given for sure the last one here is propranolol with phenylephrine and you know that phenylephrine is an alpha agonist especially the alpha 1 agonist and it is used as a nasal decongestant when you cough over the counter cough syrups and all those they have this phenylephrine cough and you know cold sorry cold remedies may they have phenylephrine because it is a nasal decongestant now what happens when you patient is on propranolol you know it is blocking your beta receptor whether it is beta 1 ya beta 2 ye dono receptors block ho jate hain you know blood vessels mein do main receptors hain alpha 1 and beta 2 
alpha 1 causes vasoconstriction beta 2 causes vasodilatation because propranolol is a beta blocker it will block the beta 2 receptors so there will be only alpha 1 left and you are giving phenylephrine to the patient it also is an alpha 1 agonist so there will be more effect of on the alpha 1 causing more vasoconstriction which ultimately leads to increase in the blood pressure so that patients can land into increase in the blood pressure so be careful when you're giving such cold and cough remedies to people who are already on propranol so these are few important drug interactions but they're important and they're worth remembering right so insulin ke saath, that is the first one which is important then it is with digoxin and verapamil right then it is with nifedipine and the last one is with philanephrine so just make notes on these these are all that you should know they are more than enough for you to know nothing much they are simple they are easy to understand because the same interactions you will be doing when you do insulin with propranolol or when you're doing ccbs again with propranolol same is going to be repeated there also so if you know already you're just going to revise it right so we just come to uh, we come to the end of this video i hope you like it and if you like such content please hit the subscribe button like the video and comment thank you so much